Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Greetings and salutations. Boy, it has been a roller coaster of a ride here in 2020. It could be no doubt. And so what we've decided to do here at DNA Diligence is put together a presentation uh, specifically on infections and immunity in hopes that we can find remedy once and for all in this crazy madness that we are surrounded by. Little housekeeping before we get started. This is intended for education. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. The information provided is for informational purposes only. So now we get that out of the way. Let's get started here. So just who am I? My name is Joey Phillips. I recently formulated a product called Reverse Effects. I also run a personal one-on-one -on -one health consulting company called DNA Diligence. I've devoted up to 20,000 hours, I'd say, easily in the health arena, dissecting complex medical journals and databases, um, and understanding the current medical field that is flawed. I decided not to pursue a medical degree. Rather, I'm all self-educated through an unwavering curiosity on how things work in the body. We've all got pathogens. We've all got viruses, bacteria, fungus, all the stuff. So how does the body respond to a myriad of complex organisms that are literally bombarding us on a day-to-day -day basis? What is this first line of defense? You know, humans are exposed to millions of potential pathogens daily. Contact, ingestion, inhalation. And our ability to avoid infections depends on a few different things. One of them is the adaptive immune system, which is basically more or less your second arm of your immune system. But the, I would say the most important thing is the innate immune system, which is the first line of defense. And I'm going to show you exactly what, the, what one of the top controlling genes is of this innate immune system, your first line of defense. So for the purposes of this particular presentation, I, I want to try to keep it simple for everybody and just really talk about a few different key factors. And if you notice in the uh, picture here, uh, image, the MBL located just a kitty corner top left of the pathogen, which is kind of in the pink there. That MBL stands for mannose binding lectin. Okay, so there is a whole bunch of stuff going on in this image. And um, one of the most important things to understand about this is what, is what is the first contact point of a pathogen going to be? That really needs to be the primary focus of where you put your ammunition in your defense system so that you can guard yourself against anything that possibly comes your way. And that being your innate immune system as your first line of defense, MBL or mannospinin lectin is that gene that sits at the upper echelon of the entire uh, innate immune system in response to anything foreign. It also helps to uh, recognize things in your body that are not supposed to be there as well, right? So anything foreign and the recognition of self versus non-self, which has major implications in things like autoimmune disorders. So before I get started on showing you exactly how to regulate this uh, innate immune system, mannose binding lectin, things of that nature, I want to kind of talk about the allopathic route that has failed so many people in epic proportions through this pharmaceutical approach. Like literally it's a band-aid approach. It only masks the symptoms, comes with all different kinds of side effects more or less is disease management and just happens to be the third leading cause of death in this country. So, you know, most people start off, you know, they're not feeling well. They'll, they'll go see, the, you know, the doctor, which has its place. Don't get me wrong. Um, then the doctor is going to prescribe, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of pill or quick fix. And, you know, that might work for a short period of time. And, and then, you know, 15 years later, you open up your medicine cabinet and you're like, how the heck did I get here? You know, 
one bottle turned into turned into three, turned into five, turned into fifteen, and and pretty soon you're taking you know uh, one medication just to mask the massive symptoms of the other medication, and this is not a sustainable model, guys. This is absolutely not a sustainable model. There is a better way, and I'd like to show you exactly uh, what you can do and put some more tools in your toolbox. And if that's the case, do we see evidence of that in ancient texts? And the answer is yes, we do. So this word, iatrogenesis or iatrogenesis, however you want to pronounce it, is the causation of disease or harmful complication or other ill effects by any medical activity, right? Including diagnosis, intervention, error, and negligence. That includes overprescribing, misprescribing, et cetera, et cetera, unnecessary uh, you know, medical procedures, all the stuff, guys. This this adds up uh, to basically be the third leading cause of death. And so when we look back at ancient texts, we look at the Bible, um, Mark 5, 26 even talks about this, that the fact that she had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. That, my friends, is evidence in the ancient text that speaks to this matter, right? Yet, even in his disease, he did not seek the Lord, but sought help from physicians. Second Chronicles 6, 12, 15. So we do see evidence in ancient texts that talk about the fact that um, physicians aren't always on the right side of things. God bless their soul. They take an oath, um, you know, but the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, we wouldn't be in this sad state of affairs um, if the things that they're employing, the tools in their toolbox actually worked. So we were designed in the image thereof, right? Meaning our body has a unique capability to repair itself just if we give it what it needs, right? So then man comes along and says, no, you know, we, we don't think that, uh, you know, your creation was, um, you know, necessarily supreme of all things. And, and we're going to try to make it better. And, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to start introducing things into the body, um, you know, that are basically manipulated biomolecules. Right. And so then you have this this constant battle between man versus nature. Right. Nature being the master of craftsmen of molecules. And it stands as an infinite source of resource for drugs. Right. So. Just to put this in perspective, upwards of 70, 80% of all drugs on the market are derived from a natural product that God provided as a seed in the ground that grows. Okay? So, natural products, guys, have been the backbone of the traditional system throughout the entire globe for time immemorial. Right? This is not a flawed system. There is a uh, answer or remedy for everything that takes place in relation to chronic disease that God has provided through nature for us at our disposal. Fact of the matter is this allopathic route, uh, this modern pharmaceutical approach is only roughly about a hundred years plus new. In, in other words, uh, the plants that grow out of the ground, the seed from the earth that has been provided for us um, is as ancient as it comes. So these ancient remedies trump modern pharmaceutical approach um, almost across the board every single time, no question, no doubt. Uh, you know, and, and the food that we eat, that we consume, should be thy medicine. Let thy food be thy medicine and let thy medicine be thy food, right? So this whole idea that, that uh, the pharmaceutical approach uh, Trump's nature is a fallacy. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. So the fact of the matter is, again, guys, 70 to 80 percent of all, um, you know, compounds in, in the allopathic realm are derived from nature. Right. And again, ancient Ayurvedic medicines, all these things, all these ancient texts. Right. Not just, you know, modern um, biblical Christianity, so to speak, talk about uh, ancient remedies. And, and so, you know, there was a, up to 176 plants, uh, medicinal plants mentioned, right, um, as well. So, again, these ancient remedies are going to trump every single time across the board, no questions. 
So back to that image that I showed you in the previous slide with the innate immune system, you know, your body's first line of defense and that gene that I mentioned earlier, manos binding lectin, right? When we look at words, words mean things, right? So where do they derive this word manos from in the first place, right? And when you look into the actual etymology of the word manos, it literally means manna. And so it, it shouldn't be shocking or surprise you that these, this manos binding lectin, when it's functioning properly, is literally the manna from heaven, right? Manos binding lectin recognizes almost anything that can be thrown your way, uh, again, through, through contact, inhalation, indigestion. It recognizes viruses, bacteria, fungus, mycoplasma, all the stuff, right? So this receptor, these receptors, these manos receptors, they primarily use a few different compounds that you can literally go out and buy in a supplement form, right? D-manos, N-acetylglucosamine, and fucose, which is uh, basically a, a seaweed polysaccharide. It's a, it's a sugar compound, right, um, in the form of bladder rack. And these three compounds play an absolute pivotal role in the first line of defense, the innate immune system, and subsequently your second line of adaptive immune system as well. So a lot of the studies surrounding manospinal lectin, you'll find um, that with the decreased levels of this manos binding lectin, the, the body's not able to detect that something uh, there is foreign to begin with. And so these, these stealth pathogens um, you know, are able to hide, basically. Uh, from from the immune system so that the immune system doesn't recognize that they're there to begin with right so how's your body going to fight something that doesn't know it's there to begin with right and there's a there's another way in which these these stealth pathogens use to basically hide the manos um, from your body in other words to make this 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 receptor this manos binding lectin gene um, not function correctly so that your body can't mount a proper attack initially so these complex sugars, right, these, these mannose, this, this N-acetylglucosamine, uh, the bladder rack or fucose, you know, uh, these are basically, um, uh, you know, sugar compounds um, that in the research you'll find the term called glycominology or glycans, right? And so by sensing the type of sugar coat that's present on the cell surface receptor, our immune system can identify other cells as friend or foe, self versus non-self. Again, back to having the ability to kill off a pathogen uh, rather than your or your body's immune system attacking itself is really kind of what we're talking about here. So this is at the upper echelon of everything that takes place with the immune system, guys, right? And these, um, these complex sugars, um, you know, in relation to these viruses and, and these bacteria um, that, are, that are involved with the immune system, they like to cloak themselves and basically hide themselves, say, no, I'm, I'm just like you. Don't attack me, right? Saying to your immune system, don't attack me. I'm just like you, right? So this is how they kind of hide. And it's, it's your body's uh, job when it has the right tools. Again, back to those main three compounds, the mannose, N-acetylglucosamine, and bladderwrack. When you have those three uh, key components in place, these uh, stealth pathogens are not able to hide any longer. Right? I always say it's like shining a black light into the darkness, and you can literally see all the, you know, the little white specks, for example. You know? And so... It, it literally turns your immune system on God mode, guys, when you combine these three key molecules, right? This, this study of glycoimmunology and, and these complex sugar molecules in relation to your immune system uh, really control the, the whole body itself uh, because, you know, we are, again, we're highly adaptive. And when we have the right things in place, the right tools in our toolbox, our body will adapt to anything that's thrown its way. Again, Back to these complex sugar, sugar molecules. So um, on the last slide, I showed you kind of how that works. But more importantly, this way in which these stealth pathogens like to hide, guys, it's called salic acid receptors. I'm going to talk about that on, on the next slide here. So the salic acid literally hides the mannose on the cell surface receptor from mannose binding lectin. 
So this prevents the activation of your second arm of your immune system, your adaptive immune system. So the salic acid, right, is again, it's, it's one of those sugar molecules. It's an acidic sugar. It helps the pathogens evade the initial first line of defense, right? Salic acids also play an important role in all different kinds of viruses, right? Just about any kind of pathogen you could possibly think of, um, these, these mechanisms in your body, the way we were created, um, oftentimes get hijacked, right? So if you've got the right tools in place in your toolbox, you can fight these things off, no questions asked. So things like, um, you know, the pharmaceutical approach, things like Tamiflu, these are called viral neuraminidase inhibitors, okay? And without getting too technical, they're attempting to stop the spread of the virus, right? So when a virus first attaches to the cell, it's using um, what's called hemagglutinin receptor. And then on the back end, when it goes to cut itself off and spread to the next cell, it's using, um, you know, basically neuraminidase. All those things, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, simply put, guys, can be encompassed into the salic acid realm, right? So again, salic acid hides the mannose, prevents your body from kickstarting the innate and adaptive immune response. Most pathogens use salic acid receptors to their benefit. And the pharmaceutical approach um, has been to inhibit neuraminidase, this enzyme that's found in your body, right? And so the studies show that skullcap and liquor shoot are natural viral neuraminidase inhibitors. So now, when you combine D-mannose, N-acetylglucosamine, bladderwrap, Chinese skull cap and licorice root together, those five compounds together, you can flag any foreign invader. And even if it does slip by through the cracks, you can stop it on the back end from replicating with these compounds. Extremely powerful. I'm giving you guys literally the keys of the kingdom here, the, the secrets of the universe, if you will. These sugar compounds, uh, this, this idea of glycoimmunology. Um, exceeds in order of magnitude RNA and DNA itself. I cannot tell you how important this is for you to understand. If you need to pause this, rewind it, do it over and over and over and over and over again, mannose receptors and salic acid receptors are the two main uh, ways in, in which uh, a stealth pathogens of any kind, including what we're dealing with today, utilize to be able to infect you. Okay, I want you to understand that. I'm going to repeat this over and over and over. If you've been following me for a while, you know this by now, right? I know this stuff may be foreign to you. You've never heard it before. It can be completely complicated. Uh, but again, uh, repetition, guys, is the mother of all wisdom. So the more you hear this, the more it will be ingrained into you. These five compounds, d mannose n glucosamine bladder rack, Chinese skull crack, and licorice root are the compounds that I have found, right, in the research that I've done personally. I've got 15, 20,000 hours of research. I read complex medical journals all day long. This is what I do. And those compounds right there, what I found in my research, are the most effective because um, not only do they hit these receptors, um, they're going to hit all these other kinds of receptors that are also involved subsequently within your innate and adaptive immune response as well. And so the, the compounds that I'm telling you right now today uh, do more for the body than let's just say other compounds do okay we want to hit the most genes and pathways simultaneously as we can as possible so that we have the most impact in a positive manner um, that we can right so that's the idea again salic acid hides mannose from the body this allows these stealth pathogens to trick the immune system into thinking that it's supposed to be there when it's not and a lot of times this triggers autoimmune response, hypersensitivities, things of that nature, right? Um, you know, autoimmune disease really didn't exist, you know, 60, 70, 80 years ago, right? There was only, I think, um, four reported cases pre-polio vaccine, right? So what is this phenomenon that we're dealing with today? It's a hyperactive immune response and where the immune system is attacking you, instead of attacking what it's supposed to be attacking, which is the stealth pathogen. And this is the cusp of the matter. And for those visual learners, this is kind of how it works, right? You've got the, the, the spike proteins, 
Um, they're, again, they're using salic acid to um, not only get into the cell, but also to spread on the back end to the neighboring cell, right? So uh, what we're attempting to do by targeting key genes and key pathways such as mannospine and lectin and these mannose receptors with the innate immune system, we're attempting to um, stop them in their tracks at the initial entry, right? And uh, if they do get by, right, if they do get by, you have, let's say you have an already struggling immune system, maybe, maybe the virus is already in there, um, you know, it could be laying dormant. Uh, I mean, things like Epstein-Barr can lay dormant for 40, 50, 60 years, right? So the likelihood of you already having a virus in you is, you know, we've all got viruses. Let's just say that. So just assume that you've got it, right? So what we want to do is hedge ourselves against the release of it on the back end. And that has everything to do with the salic acid receptors through these uh, neuromenindase enzymes, right? There are other um, like M2 proteins and things like that involved. I don't want to get into that right now. Um, but the primary way, again, is through salic acid and these mannose receptors in, in, in which the way these pathogens are infecting and spreading into the neighboring cell. Another tool, guys, you can put in your toolbox it's called the carpenter's herb. Or Prunella vulgaris is actually the technical name. I like to call it self-heal, heal all, heart of the earth. Really, heal all is what I like to call it. But the Chinese have uh, stated, in fact, that this herb, this flower, can change the course of chronic disease. Right? And uh, according to some ancient texts, this herb, this flower, has been thought to have been sent to us by God himself. To basically, uh, you know, cure all ailments, quote unquote. That's not me saying that, right? So what does it do? Boy, it's got so many compounds in it. Betalinic acid um, is extremely important, um, it, you know, component of this plant. But studies have shown uh, it to possess a wide variety of pharmacological effects, including antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, especially antiviral, antimicrobial, antibacterial, and immunological modulatory effects. And so this is, um, you know, if I had to pick one thing, this would be the one thing I would pick. If I had, if I didn't have access to anything else, if I had room in a garden, for example, to grow one thing for medicine, this would be my go-to, okay? I cannot stress this enough. This has so many active compounds in, in it, um, it would make your head spin. And so they don't call it heal all and self-heal for no reason, guys. I want you to take this to heart. The carpenter's herb is where it's at, okay? Another tool that you can put in your toolbox. So you can go out and buy these individual compounds if you'd like. Um, you know, this, was, this is one of the challenges that I was facing, um, you know, taking on personal clients and working on people's individual health is recommending numerous, uh, you know, supplements and compounds. And, 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 and what I found in the work that I was doing is it wasn't really feasible. A lot of people couldn't afford to go out and spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, three, four, five hundred dollars on a protocol, for example, um, to, to basically get themselves better, to allow the body to have what it needs to heal itself, right? So this is one of the reasons um, you know, why, uh, you know, I basically formulated reverse effects is, is to do just that is to cut down and be able to minimize how many things you're having to go out there and buy. There's listen, there's 22 ingredients in reverse effects, right? I've only mentioned several key ones here in this presentation, the D manos, the N-acetylglucosamine, the bladder rack, the skull cap, the licorice, the heal all prunella vulgaris. These are all key components. Um, that, that are found in, in reverse effects to be able to have the proper immune response, but not only have the proper immune response, to also have the proper inflammatory response. Right now, that's a hot button. This, uh, this word cytokine storm is, a, is an extremely hot topic right now. We've got all different kinds of compounds in this formulation to basically initiate the proper immune response upon infection and to be able to mitigate on the back end the proper inflammatory response as well so that the the inflammation signal um, you know isn't turned on for too long because that's that's really where the damage comes right um, you know if you've if you've 
been in the health industry for any time or, or you know been involved in researching health they they say that inflammation is the root cause of all disease it's when that signal you need inflammation right so let me get this straight you need inflammation and you know in the way that you know a child has a fever and things of that nature it's your body's way of fighting things off the problem is when that signal gets turned on for too long this is the problem this is the cytokine storm right there are numerous compounds found in reverse effects that can mitigate this cytokine storm this you know inflammatory response um, that that takes place as a result of your body attacking a foreign invader right we need to be able to have the right immune response yet turn off the inflammatory signal when it needs to be turned off and that was the purpose and the intention basically surrounding this formulation as well so again you can go out and buy um, you know tons of different compounds different supplements spend three four five hundred dollars doing it um, or you can just cut to the chase guys believe me i've done the research i've done the homework um, i have put this formulation together uh, i believe everyone in the world should be on uh, reverse effects it is that powerful there are numerous studies behind the ingredients on this and believe me when I tell you, again, this is, uh, you know, going to be your number one go-to for the immune inflammatory response systems in the body, dealing with anything that's foreign. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Guys, if you're not taking care of your health now and, and, and beginning the process of hedging yourself, you know, especially when you get up into the, you know, the 40s, I'm 42 right now, um, moving into 43. You know, I'm, I'm at that age now where I got to start thinking about these types of things. You know, when you're young, you trip, you fall, you know, you get you get a bump on your on your knee. You know, you can you can regenerate from that. You can, you know, restore quicker from those things. But, you know, when you get older, you got to hedge yourself right against everything that's thrown your way. So an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And if you're not taking care of this most magnificent machine that you will ever be given, where are you going to live? What are you going to do? right again god's provided us with things that grow out of the ground to help mitigate just about anything that comes our way and and speaking specifically with herbs that have extremely powerful antiviral activity we can talk about things like oregano rosemary thyme sage basil garlic you know, lemon balm, echinacea, elderberry, astragalus, ginger, ginseng, dandelion, peppermint. The list goes on and on and on and on. So I'm not here telling you that, that the, the, you know, the ingredients in reverse effects are the only thing that's out there, right? I have a personal garden that I grow. I'm growing oregano. I'm growing rosemary. I'm growing thyme. I'm growing sage, basil, garlic, lemon balm, echinacea, ginger. Dandelion just grows everywhere, right? So I'm literally trying to grow these things. And the purpose of that is to have a backup plan, right? What if I can't get access to, you know, X, Y, Z? You know, I need to have a backup plan. I need to be able to provide for my family. I've got two beautiful daughters and a, and a beautiful wife. And, you know, and I've always had this kind of green thumb. And I've always been interested in kind of making my own medicines, if you will. And in the research that I've done, guys... These are things that, that are not hard to grow. You can literally grow these in your backyard, right? And uh, I want to try to show you exactly what you can do with these things, you know, after they start coming out of the ground, right? They're not just for, for looks. They're not just ornamental. You can actually make medicines out of this, and I want to try to show you how to do that briefly. One of the things I've been trying to do is, you know, a little do-it-yourself herbal tinctures, you know. Um, I've been using organic uh, vodka uh, to be able to do that um, in these mason jars, right? So when, when it comes time to harvest these herbs, first thing I'm doing is drying them out. Now, there's several different ways you can do that. You can stick them in a dehydrator. You can stick them in the sun to dehydrate. You can bundle them up and hang them from your window if you want. Um, you know, but the idea is to dry these out because then be, they become more potent once they're dry. Okay. Um, you know, you can do fresh herbs in, a, in an herbal tincture, but I'm here to tell you that when you dry them out, they're more potent. Okay. And so, again, a lot of herbalists prefer uh, something neutral like a vodka so that the taste of the herb comes through. But you can literally use any spirit if you want. Uh, you know, herbal tinctures, you can make anything. You can use a dried flower. You have to research on this on your own as far as each individual plant. 
Uh, but you, you can use the flowers, the leaves, the roots, the bark, the berries, all different kinds of ways that you can kind of make your own do-it-yourself herbal tinctures, guys. So the idea is you want to first dry them. Then you basically want to stick them in a mason jar, right? I, kind of, I tend to use the bigger ones because I'm growing a bunch of stuff. And I don't like doing the work over and over and over again. So I'm going to make a huge batch of whatever I'm doing, right? I'm going to stick it in that mason jar. I'm going to pour some vodka over the top of it. And I'm going to shake it twice daily in a cool, dark place. Leave it in a cool, dark place. Shake it twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. That's usually what I do for about six to eight weeks. And then you're literally going to strain it with cheesecloth and put it into like one of those little tinctures you can buy online. They're dirt cheap. And, and then you've literally got your own medicine at your own disposal anytime you need it. Okay. This is another way that you can help mitigate and, and you know, um, add more tools to your toolbox again to uh, shore up your defenses, right? This is going to be important, I believe, in, in the times that are, that are going to be coming. Let food be that medicine and medicine be that food. I have found the research that the Mediterranean diet is probably one of my favorites. Um, you know, it incorporates all different kinds of healthy foods. It is probably one of the most versatile you know, so you're not restricted. There's all different kinds of ways you can do the modified Mediterranean diet. There are so many rep uh, recipes out there for the Mediterranean diet that it'll make your head spin, right? So every stage of the immune response, specific micronutrients, including vitamins and minerals, play a key role and synergistic uh, role. And, and the deficiency in one of these essential nutrients may impair immunity, as the studies say. An individual's overall nutritional status and pattern of dietary intake comprised of nutrients and non-nutritive bioactive compounds of food and any supplementation with nutraceuticals, including vitamins and minerals, can influence positively or negatively the function of the immune system, end quote. Right? So... You are what you eat, guys. Okay, if I'm if I'm going through a McDonald's drive thru every day, but I'm taking uh, you know reverse effects or whatever kind of supplement out there, and there I'm basically <laughs> throwing it all out the window, all the positive changes I'm trying to make. So you know you got to think about things like diet, lifestyle, supplementation, things that matter. So again, the Mediterranean diet is one of my absolute favorite. There's a lot of credible evidence. Uh, out there that shows that the Mediterranean diet can provide protection against heart disease, metabolic syndrome, diabetes, cancer, you know, inflammatory bowel disease, cognitive dysfunction, uh, but especially with chronic conditions associated with inflammation. So it's going to be able to modulate your immune inflammatory response systems and help support everything that you're doing um, via supplementation as well. Very key component um, in, in terms of overall health, guys, is what you're putting into your mouth. Tons of recipes out there for modified Mediterranean diets. So here's a little pyramid to kind of just give you a visual uh, about, you know, kind of how the modif modified uh, Mediterranean diet. Your, your primary intake seems to be like vegetables, fruits, um, you know, healthy oils, things of that nature, protein. Um, you know, uh, if you can get a good source of fish. You know, a lot of times the, the salmon that we, you know, buy at the store is going to have a lot of mercury. So you need to be careful about what kind of fish you're eating. Um, you know, things like, um, you know, turkey, different kinds of poultry, lamb. Um, those are going to be, you know, healthy, lean, um, you know, proteins, guys. And, um, you know, a lot of people um, kind of shy away from dairy. I, I believe dairy is extremely important because it's got those kind of fats in it that your body needs, for especially brain function as well. So again, most your most of your food intake really needs to be uh, you know at the bottom of that pyramid, and 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 things of that nature. So again, in association with diet, you need to make sure you you're hydrating, right? And you need to try at least uh, be active at least twenty minutes a day. Get out in the sunshine, get that vitamin D, help boost that immune system. Uh, drink plenty of fluids, help flush all that those toxins out of the cells. And, and you'll just be one more step ahead of the game. And so I'm not going to read all these different, uh, you know, things that you can employ into the Mediterranean diet itself. But this should just give you, if you need to pause this frame, uh, for example, these are just, this is just one example of, you know, things that you can do to give you kind of an idea of what you can do. But, um, you know, the Mediterranean diet, I love it because it provides the body. A lot of the foods you're going to be eating with the Mediterranean diet it's going to be a lot of those healthy fats. We don't cook but with anything but uh, you know, organic coconut oil here and organic olive oil. 
coconut oil on high heat, olive oil on low heat. Do not use the oil, um, olive oil on high heat. Um, you know, it, that's not a good thing for your health either. You can look into that. I'm not going to, you know, go into the studies on that. But, you know, we use a lot of coconut um, oil to cook with in this household. Okay. And so we eat a lot of fresh uh, fresh veggies from the garden. We grow a lot of our own food. We like to know where our food's coming from. Just because it says organic on there anymore, unfortunately, guys, doesn't necessarily mean at the last stage of the process they're not putting something on that. Okay? Important for you to understand. So if, if you want the, the best food security of what you're putting into your body, you need to be at least moving in that direction getting the seed and start the process begin start growing your own food doesn't matter where you start you know it just matters that you start start with something in your windowsill doesn't matter okay so this is the idea of 100 percent self-sufficiency not dependent on any other outside you know resource um it, you know is is the ultimate goal here you know as far as i'm concerned you know in relation to your health you want to be you know you want to bulletproof yourself you got to be able to have access to clean food Right. And in and, and this day and age, growing your own food seems to be one of the last options to be able to do that. And so go ahead and look at this list if you need more time. There's again, there's tons of diets uh, out there or tons of recipes for the Mediterranean diet out there. So please feel free uh, to do your own research on that. And so another key component to your body's immune system, inflammatory response system, is going to be minerals and trace elements. Without the minerals, you can eat all the nutrients in the world, but they won't be transported correctly, guys. You've got to have the minerals. And unfortunately, most of the minerals that are found in the soil, they are depleted due to modern farming practices. Go look it up. Uh, U.S. Senate document, right? This, this stuff is not new news, right? So you can, you can be uh, you know, out there buying organic food, and doing all the stuff, doing all the right things, but still being mineral deficient. Unfortunately, this is the situation that we're living in now. Okay, this is the hard reality. You've got to have the minerals to make all of the other, you know, what they call biochemical reactions take place in the body. There are tons of different things in, involved with the immune system and very, you know, specific uh, minerals and trace elements like zinc. Zinc's probably the most important. Um, and you've got copper is important for the immune system. Zinc and copper play off each other. It's important to balance those things out. Selenium deficiency is a real problem, right? It creates more oxidative stress, which makes you more susceptible to infection. Um, there's, what, three, 400 biochemical reactions that take place in the body just with magnesium alone. Um, iodine is extremely important for the immune system to help fight infections. Iron deficiency infects, you know, um, affects hemoglobin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Hemoglobin is really important to transport oxygen. You need oxygen in your cells. That's kind of a big deal right now, especially with the mask. Okay, so you know you can go out and buy each individual one of these, you know, uh, minerals if you'd like. But again, I'm here to help you condense the amount of research and time and money that you're spending. Condense those things all down into. You know, basically tiny nuggets you can extract from this information to be able to take actionable steps right away to be able to get all these things in your body that you need. Okay. And so what I found in my research is that fulvic acid is a great answer to that mineral deficiency that impacts the, the immune inflammatory response systems in the body. Right. Fulvic acid contains pretty much every single trace element and nutrient and, or mineral that your body needs. It reduces oxidative stress, provides the most powerful electrolyte for ATP in the body, your body's cellular energy for mitochondria function, um, you know, creates an alkaline environment, has anti-aging property, and one of my favorites right now, guys, with everyone walking around wearing these masks, what do you think the masks are doing to people? They are depleting oxygen of the body creating what they call a hypoxic environment in the body. You cannot deplete oxygen for prolonged periods of time. Your immune system will not function correctly. Okay, there's tons of studies on hypoxia and the immune system. Go out, just research those two things, hypoxia and immune function. It's kind of a big deal. And so if you have to, wear a mask. You need to be able to hedge yourself and increase your oxygen. That's what this fulvic acid can do for you. It can increase your oxygen up to 45%. Also, fulvic acid, um, you know, provides 
uh, healthy for, for healthy brain function, regenerate cells, all different kinds of things that are involved with the overall health, especially immune system, with a fulvic acid. I've already done videos on this in the past. Fulvic acid is one of those go-to things that's an absolute must. Sleep, guys. Sleep's also extremely important when we're talking about the immune system. This is the time that your immune system resets itself, right? So if you're not getting proper sleep, it's going to impact you. And that's a huge problem nowadays, especially with the modern devices. Everyone's up late doing something. Right? It's just not enough time in the day. You hear it over and over and over again. Right? So if you're not getting the right amount of sleep, seven, eight hours a day minimum, really, you're going to suffer. Right? So sleep and immunity are bidirectionally linked. The immune system activation alters sleep, and sleep in turn affects the innate and adaptive arm of the body's defense system. So a good night's sleep is commonly recommended as the best medicine, along with laughter. I hear laughter is the best medicine. Well, so is sleep. Uh, especially against infectious diseases. Fatigue and sleepiness promote a less active behavioral state, thereby likely facilitating recovery from its infection by conserving energy. So you always hear people walk around, you know, when they don't feel well, what, what happens when you don't feel well? You're tired, you're sleepy. It's for a good reason. It's your body's way of telling you to rest, get some rest, so that your immune system can do what it needs to be doing. The enhancement of sleep during an infection is assumed to be the feedback of the immune system to, to promote host defense. It's associated with a, a reduced uh, infection risk and can improve infection outcome as well. So prolonged sleep deficiency uh, or, or short sleep duration, sleep disturbances can lead to chronic system low-grade inflammation and is associated with not only infectious diseases but a wide variety of other things as well so you guys you need to be getting your good sleep okay it's very very important so this is an image i was able to pull off that study uh you know involving sleep in the immune system you know kind of how they play off each other right so um if you're if you're you know sleep is disturbed um you know you're fatigued a lot a lot of the times uh, you know, your, your body might elicit too strong of immune, uh, you know, activation. And again, if you're, if you're not getting enough sleep as it is, your host defense system cannot mount the proper attack and cannot recover uh, and do what it needs to be doing. So again, get those Z's, get that sleep. It's absolutely vital for immune system, homeostasis or balance, as they say, uh, for you to be able to fight off whatever comes your way. Right, so you can you can do all the right things, you can be taking all the right supplements, you can be eating all the right foods, but if you're not getting the right sleep, and not only the right sleep, but a sound sleep, um, then you're gonna have issues. Okay, so again, it's real important to be able to get that sleep, and, and when you are sleeping, get in that deep sleep um, to where you're not disturbed. You know, you're waking up every you know couple hours, and and you know the slightest sound kind of wakes you up. That type of thing. You need to be able to have a restful, deep, long sleep. So these are some sleep aids or remedies that can kind of help you uh, with that. These are literally things you can grow in your backyard as well. We've got chamomile, lemon balm, uh, valerian, passion flower. Those are things we have growing in our garden right now um, as well. I could easily throw some lavender out there. But you guys, these are these are sleep aids that you can literally grow out of the ground. You can go out and buy GABA, melatonin, uh, you know, um, uh, good for sleep. However, I don't recommend being on melatonin for a long period of time. Um, as you can kind of create dependency on that. And there's a lot of research behind there. Kava, tryptophan, L-theanine, all these things that, that God's created um, through nature, through that seed growing out of the ground that you can literally employ and, and put into your toolbox to help you sleep, okay? Um, these are real important, right? So if you have a hard time sleeping, again, chamomile, lemon balm, passion flower, those are probably going to be my three go-to for that. But there's all different kinds of things out there. These are not the end of it uh, by any means. There's all different kinds of remedies out there that God's provided for us to be able to help us sleep soundly. And consequently, most of these compounds, when you look them up and cross-reference them with immune function infectious diseases, they also are antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal. So you're, you're fighting the disease off, helping your body sleep, and fighting the disease off literally at the same time. So that's huge for me. And just to kind of summarize everything we've talked about so far, 
manos or the manna from heaven through manos binding lectin is your your body's uh, you know first line of defense within your innate immune system it helps the body recognize self versus non-self in other words what's supposed to be there what isn't is my immune system going to attack me or is it going to attack that which is foreign salic acid hides manos and that's what the pathogens like to use to not only infect the cell but also to spread to the next cell right and so with those two points right there Again, mannose binding lectin, it needs D mannose, it needs bladder rack, it needs N acetylglucosamine. The salic acid um, receptors need uh, neuromenidase inhibitors, it's called. Uh, Chinese skull cap and licorice root are, are two powerful tools for that. The Mediterranean diet helps to optimize your overall health, including inflammatory immune responses. Mineral deficiencies impact us and play a vital role in infectious diseases and immunity and sleep is commonly recommended as the best medicine for an infectious disease because that's when your immune system resets itself okay so um, I hope you got some good takeaways from this um, those are things that you can do right now these are actionable steps that you can take I've provided a few links um, at the end of this slide where you can actually go out and purchase some of these things um, but literally, these are some tools that you can put in your toolbox that you can do right now. You don't have to wait for the next hydrochloroquine, which consequently they derive from Jesuit's bark, right? Jesuit's bark was an ancient malaria, um, you know, remedy that, that was employed years and years ago. You don't have to wait. You can literally go out and do this stuff right now, okay? And speaking of hydrochloroquine, if the people let the government decide what foods they eat and what medicines they take, their bodies will soon be in as sorry a state as are the souls of those who live under tyranny. Thomas Jefferson. Right? So having the access, having the ability to be able to take care of yourself. Health is the number one thing as far as freedom is concerned. If you don't have freedom over your body, bodily autonomy, what else do you have, right? You need to be able to access these things um, and to be able to help yourself, be able to help your overall health in, in relation to, you know, infections and immunity, but literally life itself, okay? Again, if the, if the people let authority dictate what they can and can't do with their own body, you might as well just get used to the boot in your face. And so this, this really health, this idea of being healthy is really, the ultimate freedom from any outside source. If you've got any other questions, anything I can help you with, I do personal one-on-one -on -one consultations, just email me, dnadiligence at, at gmail.com. Again, I want to thank you for, for spending this brief amount of time with me. And I look forward to uh, hearing your feedback. And guys, again, your health is the most important thing in the world right now. Uh, if you don't have health, you, you don't have anything. You could have all the money in the world and, and gather that money for the rest, you know, the whole first part of your life. And at the end of, at the, end of the road, once your health starts deteriorating, it will drain your bank account and leave you bankrupt. Medical bankruptcy is the number one bankruptcy in the world. I just want to leave you with those thoughts. Invest in yourself today. Take actionable steps. Do something to help yourself so that you can help others. This is what this is all about, right? Love thy neighbor as thyself, right? If I'm not helping, if I can't help myself, how the heck am I going to help you? I have to be healthy. I have to be vibrant, full of life to be able to make an impact on anybody else. And that's the bottom line. Reverse effects and fulvic acid, guys, going to be my two go-tos. For just about anything you're dealing with. You can find them on those links there. You can also find me at www.dnadiligence.com. dna-diligence.com is the actual URL. You can look me up. I'm all over Facebook, Joey Phillips. Again, I want to thank you for your time. And I hope you have a blessed day, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in this world. I really believe that anything that's done may be undone in the same manner in which it's done in the first place. As long as you have the right tools at your disposal. God bless and be well.